Certainty. The fifth requirement of a binding contract is that the terms of the agreement must be sufficiently certain. This, again, is a relatively simple requirement. There is a balancing act to, to be made here. On the one hand, a court will struggle to interpret a contract where it is so vague that the contract's meaning is unclear. On the other hand, contracts may well be drawn up informally, but with a common understanding of the parties, and courts should not be quick to strike down deals which parties were intending to perform. Perhaps a classic example of an uncertain agreement is an agreement to agree. You may have come across such a document, uh, a letter of intent or a heads of terms document, in which the parties indicate the type of position they would like to see in a contract, but subject to full negotiation. As a general rule, courts are likely to be shy in upholding such agreements, particularly where there is a lot of latitude for negotiation by parties. And this is the case even where one of the parties has started to perform, the case in question RTS Flexible Systems and Mueller. In particular, agreements which contain such terms as at such price and terms as to be agreed upon between the parties is unlikely to be upheld. The authority Kings Motors Oxford and Lax. You may also come across agreements to negotiate. These generally take one of two forms an agreement that the parties must negotiate with each other, or an agreement that the parties must not negotiate with anyone else. The former category of agreement, that parties must negotiate with each other, is unlikely to be upheld. Courtney and Fairburn and Tulaney. The latter category, that parties must not negotiate with anyone else, in effect exclusive negotiations, may be certain if limited to a fixed period in time, or uncertain if no time is attached to the agreement, according to the case of Pitt and PHH Asset Management. A degree of business sense or commercial reality needs to be read into a document which might, on its face, be unclear. Take the sentence, In year one, party B will buy ten tonnes of wheat grown in the field between party A's house. In year two, party B will buy five tonnes. If party B bought, five, bought ten tonnes of wheat grown in the field between, behind party A's house in year one, and then attempted to argue that the contract was unenforceable on the basis of uncertainty, since it does not specify of what party B will buy five tonnes in year two, one would expect such a claim to fail although it would indeed be clearer to specify exactly what party B will be buying, the context would lead anyone reading those sentences to the conclusion that it was five tonnes of the same wheat as in the previous sentence. And indeed, that is what happened in year one. The case in question, Hills and Company and Arcos. As I say, another example where the requirement of certainty is very simple indeed, I shall leave this recording here.